Hey guys, on today's Better Together, I am coming to you from the set of our holiday movie here in Connecticut with the stars of the movie, Jana Kramer and Ryan McPartland, also an appearance by our director, Brian Herslinger. Um, so excited for you guys to hear about our time here, but also we chat with Jana Kramer about how she's been holding up post-divorce and how this movie was really a perfect time for her and I to kind of get through some tough times. So I hope you guys tune in. I hope you love it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Better Together. When you know better, you get better. That is exactly what we try to do here every single day. I don't know what day it is. Kelsey, what day is it? It's Monday, August 9th. Thank you. You're welcome. (laughs) I'm going rogue, guys. I'm coming to you from our set of our Christmas movie, The Holiday Fix Up for Lifetime. Um, In the room just over there are the stars. And we're going to be chatting with them in just a second. But I just want to say hello to our Hill Squad. Thanks for being with us as always. Um, Kelsey, this is a treat because um, I've always wanted to do a Christmas movie. I've talked about this now the last like week or so on the show, but... Um, these guys have been amazing and, um, I'm going to bring in Jana first, then we're going to bring in Ryan and then we might even get the director. So we'll see. Just depends on the shooting schedule. So, wow. We get the whole crew. We get the whole crew. What a that treat. is right. But we're going rogue. We're on a couch here in Waterford, Connecticut. Is it Waterford, Connecticut? Water. Yeah. Waterford, Connecticut. Um, so, uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring in my friend, my, my co-star skipping in my Jana Kramer. Hi. Hi. Okay. So we have to share this mic. Okay. I love it. Let's do it. Um, how's it sound? Sounds awesome. Kelsey. Great. It sounds great. She said, so here's the deal. Um, Jana has her own podcast and I did yours like a week ago. Yep. I had you and Ryan on and we talked to all things movie and it's um, I just, I'm just so thankful that you came aboard because you were doing us a huge favor by doing this movie and you've been killing it. Thank you. Well, I am so excited to chat with you because um, and by the way, this is kind of funny. First of all, she knew how to use the mic. I didn't know how to use the mic. She's like, you oh, did. you need to do this and this and this. And I was like, okay, of course she knows. Um, because you're probably doing your podcast on location a lot, right? Yeah, I, I had to do a, one just the other day before I came into work, which, you know, mine is, it can, we talk about a lot of heavy things. So it, at times it can feel like it's, it's, it's emotional, you know, as you know, you yeah. talk about a lot of stuff on your podcast too. But um, yeah, I, I had a few episodes I had to do here, but I'm ready to go back to like my home studio. Yeah. So the podcast is called Wine Up? Wine Down. Wine Down. But I would love to wine Why up. is it? Why did I have wine up in my head? I don't know. But That's I a song. Like I love that. <laughs> like you wine up. Oh, because of like the song. It up, it's because of the song. Yeah. Song? Wine Up. Is do you guys want me to yeah, sing it? It's cat. Um, it's cat song. Why not? Why not? Oh, I'm, I'm yeah. I like. It. I mean, oh, yeah. I've, I've been wanting to change. Um, change it up. So maybe I get a whole new name. <laughs> I, and I do like wine up. So in why would you want to wind down? You totally. Know? <laughs> well, you do want to wind down at night, <laughs> and you're sure. you. You know, you have wine, and so this actually makes a lot of sense <laughs> for you. Wind down is a good name, I think. But so, what is the podcast about? Like, what is kind of your through line? So, well, I'll say it started just me talking about life and and motherhood. And then I had my ex on and that would became more about a relationship and how to fight for your marriage and, um, and, you know, just again, parenting. And now I'm honestly trying to figure out what it is because I feel like I'm, I'm not really sure. I'm trying to find my voice again. What do I want to talk about? What I don't want to talk about because I am so open, but there are things that I just, I just don't know. It's like that weird balance because when, I, when you're so open, you're so um, open to talking about things. It's mm-hmm. hard to go, okay, I'm going to reel that back in. And then I'm going to choose what I'm going to talk about. Cause people are like, wait a minute, why aren't you talking about this when you've been so open about X, Y, and Z? So yeah, I'm, I'm honestly, I don't, for, for me right now, the podcast is just about, you know, the journey I'm on today. And I don't know where that is tomorrow, but it's just about being open as open as I can without you know, I, I, someone once said, don't, don't, don't share, um, don't share your, wo- like your wounds. Wait till it's a scar. Oh, <laughs> don't share your wounds. Wait till it's a scar. Who told you that? 
Um, I think it was a therapist on one of the episodes and it was just something that actually my ex and I learned when we were doing it. Cause it, when it's so raw and open and you're bleeding everywhere, the worst thing you want to do is let more people in to like add salt to the wound. Wow. Or, and I think that my journey with my mom, there was like a whole period where I wasn't doing my show. Kevin was doing my show. And I think that sometimes when it's all fresh, you're in the moment and you're not really able to take a step to really understand stuff. So I was like really kind of like disappointed in a lot of people that didn't show up or that um, just were, I don't know, didn't handle things right. And now when I look back, I kind of look at it a little differently. Mm -hmm. And so now that it's more of a wound, you're like, okay, well, I can have some understanding. I can have some empathy or yeah, they just plain sucked. Yeah. But and you can speak better on it too. Yeah. It's one of those things where it's like, there's so many things that I wish I could take back. And when it's already out there and press has picked it up or that's like, I would not have said it like that. Yeah. But when you're in that. There, you know. was, there was something I think you said oh. that you were really regretting. Well, there's a lot of things I regret yeah. saying. <laughs> Just be like straight up open about that. Isn't um, that all of us? But, but that's the price you pay when you are vulnerable. And that's not easy. And I think that's why people love you is because you are vulnerable and they can kind of see themselves in your journey. So that's where it's kind of tricky, I'm sure, for you because you're like, shit, do I keep anything for myself? And you have to consider kids and all of these mm-hmm. things. So how do you kind of, how are you navigating that right now? That's been the hardest piece because I do want to be open. I do want to be honest, but the kids is my number one focus. So I never want them to read something that would hurt them, that would affect them. Obviously our divorce is going to affect the kids and whether we got divorced or not, I'm sure I would have screwed them up somehow, or, you know, they would be going to therapy for something, but Right now, it's just I want to really censor what they're going to be able to Google and what they're Mm -hmm. going to be able to see, because there's already stuff out there that it's it's going to be really hard for them to probably read. And we'd have to have the conversation. So now it's like, okay, what's what's the narrative of what I want out there? And that's honestly the reason why I started talking about the infidelity piece in my marriage was because I wanted to change the narrative. I'm like, my ex didn't understand. I was like, people will write about the fact that you cheated on me in every article. Mm -hmm. So let's change the narrative and be like, Hey, but this is how we survived it. And this is how we got through it. I mean, obviously it didn't end up that positive tone, but But you you know, now I I tried. And so now I'm like, okay, let's change the narrative, like how I'm, how I'm stronger and how I've been able to walk through it. But it is definitely hard because there's moments when I do feel weak and I do feel not strong or, um, and I want to post something that's maybe um, a little mean to my ex or a little jab or a little, but at the end of the day, I'm like, okay, that's probably going to get picked up. And then that's going to probably start a fight with us. And then my kids are going to read it. And would I love to tell the truth? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's that's not going to be, you know, good for my kids in the long run. I had a friend who's very successful in our business who said, your mind always goes to the worst place first. Yeah. And then you got to kind of backtrack it. And so, yeah, it's, it's great that you at least have that filter where you're like, okay, I know where it's going to go. I know what's going to happen. So I'm not going to do it. But how do you get through those moments when you are in so much pain? What have you been doing? Is there anything that you can share that can help somebody else? Honestly, I, I just, I will let the emotion run its course. Um, my best friend, who's also my day-to-day manager, she's in the room with us right now, but I'll never forget. It was about a month ago in LA where I, I had a feeling come up and it was, a I missed my ex and I wanted to text him and say, and, and bring it all back up. And I just, I started crying underneath my sunglasses and I was about to text him. And instead, and I was like, all right, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to, you know, pretend I'm not crying. But instead I said, Hey, Kat, I'm really struggling right now. Mm. Like, and then she's like, what's wrong? And then I just started bawling. And I once I had, like, just hearing it, like once I finished bawling my eyes out, I didn't want to text him again. Yeah. And I didn't, you know, and I was okay, but it was just, I think having those emotions when they come in, those triggers or those moments, feel them and let them out because holding them in is what I think has, has hurt me in the long run. What do you think got you to that place? to miss him? Is it just missing having someone or is it missing the good things? Like, were you able to decipher? I think it's just that I love, I love, um, I love companionship. I love being around people. I love having that connection. And I think it's, um, there were good moments. 
So when I think about the good moments, I'm like, man, we could have done it. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. this sucks. But then also it's the kids. That's where I always come back to. I'm like, I, I, I would have kept trying for years and years just because I, I always wanted that, you know, perfect family for my kids that I didn't have. Yeah. So, but then I go, when I think about that, then I go to anger. Cause I'm like, man, like you messed up. Like why? Like you had, yeah. we had an f- amazing family. So then I get angry and then I was just like, all right, I got to, and what I do, another thing to help me when it's not crying, I have written some vicious emails that I don't send oh. or text messages. I mean, you should yeah. see my note section on my uh-huh. phone. I mean, I just, I go, I go for it and everything I want to say. And, and then I just delete or I leave it there so I can read it and then not send it. That's um, our guest earlier this week, Brian Mahan. He's um, a trauma, trauma expert. He taught me to write in, a, in an anger journal. Mm. because he said that women are really trained to kind of have to suppress their anger. It's not an emotion that we're, you know, um, that's socially acceptable for women. So whenever I talk about anger in a session, it's in the form of, I was annoyed. And he goes, well, that's your key word. Annoyed is really just anger. And so I will write in the journal, but that's such a healthy thing to do um, because you're letting it out. And then and kind of like takes the air out of the balloon. And it's interesting too, because I think my friends were so happy that I got to the angry place because for the first two weeks post finding out things again, I was just in bed laid up and my friends were, you know, helping me (laughs) clean my tissue box, (laughs) like the snot rags from my table. And, and then it was the week two where I got up and I was just like, no. And they're like, oh, thank God you're there at angry. And then I walked into therapy and I was like, okay, I'm angry. I know that's probably bad. And she's like, no, that's not bad. Like feel every single emotion mm-hmm. that you're about to go through and it's going to circle. And it does. I go from being mad, angry, sad. Like it just rotates yeah. constantly. You know, something I forgot to mention earlier when we were talking about your kids and how you would have done it forever for your kids. That's always probably something you're going to feel inside of you, but I want to offer you a different perspective on Please, that. Please, Tony Robbins me right now. Okay, so, I'm so excited. So the other perspective on that is you're going to model a healthy response to unhealthy behavior for your kids. So you're going to teach them that perhaps that um, staying in something that isn't the most kind of um, optimal healthy. and healthy scenario isn't necessarily the way, right? You don't go down with the ship. Mm-hmm. And so you made a choice that is, is going to teach them what, you know, a healthy relationship is. You're not just going to stay together because you're staying together for them, because at the end of the day, um, this might be a better lesson for them. Yeah, no. And I, and I do, I, in my, um, adult brain and my, yeah. whatever, when you're in a good whatever, space, brain. Good space, I yeah. 1000% yeah. hear you on that. I feel the same thing. And I'm excited to show my daughter and son, you know, how a healthy relationship should look. And, you yeah. know, I hope that we can get to a, a place with me and my ex where we have that good co-parenting relationship and they can see another side of it. So, yeah, well, I will say, um, I think that you are so incredibly strong to have gone through all of this and, you know, watching you on set, you know, you're producing, you're acting, you know, you're so crisp with your, not just your acting and your talent, but you are there ready to go. There's no waiting. There's no trying to drag you out of a dressing room. I've watched. We don't have a dressing room. So there's I know, I know. But, <laughs> I'm kidding. but I'll tell you, I, I'm known for not throwing in bouquets. <laughs> so I have watched you be so attentive to your kids while you're so attentive to your work. Then you're doing your other side hustles on the side. And I, I literally woke up this morning and I was thinking about it. And I was like, oh my God, she's doing all her like Instagram stuff. She's doing her movie stuff. She's doing the kids. She's making sure the kids are having the most amazing experience. And you're just, just killing it. Like that's not easy to do alone, right? I know it's hard for me to do everything I do. And I have someone helping me. If I had kids in the mix, I don't know how my head would explode. And so I give you so much credit for how you're handling all of this. And I, I told you, I'm like, I don't think you need Tony Robbins, even though we all need Tony <laughs> Robbins. Cause she's been talking to me about this. She's like, I need Tony and we all need Tony and we all need more tools. But I have to say you have blown me away with your work ethic, with your passion, with your um, empathy, everything. Like you've just been incredible. And then on top of it, as a, as somebody working with you, 
I have loved, sorry, I'm going to get emotional now. Uh, babe. Yeah. Fuck, I always cry. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was been glossing the last. Um, I've loved working with you. And I just think you're so generous and so kind. And maybe I'm just not used to that. <laughs> so I just think that you people need to know how great you are. Um, if they don't already, she's so um wonderful and uplifting. Like I come in and you're like, you look amazing or whatever. Like you're just so great. And so I just want to say that. Um, and this has been such a fun experience. And I think we both kind of needed this escape in a weird way. Yeah. Right. And like with everything with your mom and, you know, just, and then my divorce being finalized, like one, when, when I was at work and yeah, we were all on set, but I will say that, um, having your energy come on set was a breath of fresh air for everyone. And, you know, yes. and me included, like I needed your energy to like lift me up in those scenes when I was having a really you know bad day. And so just, I cannot thank you enough for that as well. Like, mm-hmm. I just feel like, like exactly. Like we're in that, that time where we needed, we really needed this. And then we needed each other to kind of be like, we got this, we're strong. Yeah. We don't feel strong. Cause then I hear you say like, you're so strong. That is what I'm like, man, one day I hope I see that. Like, and, and to you from the perspective of me looking at you, mm-hmm. what you're going through and what you're grieving. It's, it's nice to hear, but sometimes it's hard to feel when I don't feel strong. Yeah. Well, I think we never believe that about ourselves. Cause Kevin used to tell me all the time. He's like, you're so strong. You're so strong. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm falling apart inside. I am not. And then it was only in this last couple of years dealing with my mom's tumor and my tumor and all of the stuff we've dealt with that I realized it, it, it hit me. So it'll click in you at some point where I'm like, Oh, okay. I am definitely strong. I know I can t- pretty much handle anything that comes my way. Um, so there'll be a moment where it clicks for you because I see it in you. I'm not just saying it. I am like, damn, that girl has power. Like you have power and yeah, you're, you're great. You're great. Yeah. You got it. So can we just do a show together? Like, yeah. we, uh, we need to do something. We have to figure this out. I um, love you and I need your own. I'm in, I'm totally in. And I think we will. Perfect. <laughs> so now that I've got you in tears, of course, me in tears, um, I'm going to let you go back to set. Okay, great. Thanks. So you can <laughs> maybe use this in your next scene. This is what, like your so final happy. scene. <laughs> is this your final scene? Uh, tomorrow is. Okay. So then you go home. I go home and to Nashville. Nashville. I see my babies, which I'm excited about. And then um, the life of an actor. I don't know what's next. Back to auditioning. Wow. So I hate auditioning. It's the worst. I suck at auditioning. I blow. I'm off camera for when Ryan <laughs> needs me for auditions, but I am terrible on the other side. I know. So I guess you're not going to give me any tips because no. I just, I feel like I get so nervous. Same. But then it's, when I can just do I like it to be in the room and because of everything in COVID and you can't be in the room these days. So yeah. Like, I don't even like being in the room. I'm saying like that. Cause Ugh. then I can be like charm them. And then they like, I, <laughs> in a way where it's like, just don't look at my acting. Like, hi, we can be friends. This is yeah. a thing. And then I do my acting and then, you know, so, so, so funny. Well, right, I love you. you. Mm-hmm. we're better together oh, baby yes we're better together. we are better together um let everyone know where they can get your show oh uh well my handle is kramer girl and you wind down and then i've got a uh, wine one brick wine.com yeah so go get drunk on her wine Thank you. thanks babe all right my next guest as my computer is falling <laughs> uh, my next guest hails from where was it again Glen Ellen, Glen Ellen Illinois. Illinois. And he is the reason I am in this movie. Um, everybody welcome Ryan McPartland. Ryan, Woo-hoo! please, please come to my, my couch. What's happening? <laughs> I'd like Where to cast you in something. Is that the new title of this? <laughs> Put me okay. on the couch. So Ryan, um, I think I've told everybody that um, you moved me so much with this letter that you wrote me while you were filming another movie in Vancouver. So I had sent him the COVID diary that I had made about my parents and us. And he sent me this long, beautiful letter with this beautiful take and this beautiful compliments. And I'm crying reading it. And then I had to put it aside, reread it to, you know, be more calm to respond. And in the back and forth, Eventually, I became his sister in a movie. And he's like, well, we got to just run it up the flagpole. And so 
you well, know, Jana, listen. Lifetime, everybody was like, okay. That's so then amazing. here I was. Amazing that you did it. And I got to tell you, I, I went out, bought a sympathy card, started writing the sympathy card. And I was just like, God, it just doesn't, when you lose a parent like you did, um, the sympathy card just didn't like, you know, there weren't, there wasn't enough space. Yeah. There wasn't enough space to like, you know, uh, especially convey my feelings of what that video meant and what it taught me. And I said, Oh my God, I'm going to really, I'm going to hu- hold those hugs a little longer. I'm going to say the things that you're not comfortable saying to to your parents when they're around, because we all get into these patterns of mm-hmm. how we normally communicate with each other. And I wanted to, um, I just wanted to tell you how much it moved me. And, and that's, that's how it started. It was just, so I, I was in quarantine in Vancouver for a project and I was like, okay, now I have the time. And I'm like, I hope this is still your email because this, <laughs> since COVID, like, you know, nobody's yeah. been seeing people or doing anything. So um, I sent it and I got that auto reply back. Like life is busy right now. <laughs> you know, My like, auto reply. And then a couple of weeks later when you're like, oh my God, this meant so much that it, it opened the door for us to pick up on the conversation that we left off uh, almost a couple of years ago about um, doing a Christmas movie together. And I told you, I was working with Jana. You're like, I love Jana. And yep. if there's any roles in that <laughs> movie, I'm like, well, there is one that we're looking for my sister, but I, you know, I wouldn't think you would play that. And you were, you were all over it. And I all in. It. so I say the script, you loved it. And it was just great. So. I would have come just done hair and makeup or something like I just, and it was in, yeah, I love Christmas movies and I wanted to be a part of it. And we had talked about it. <laughs> Um, and you did help with hair and makeup, and you actually did. I did you're right. You helped with everything. Like <laughs> I did Jana's for a split second. <laughs> yeah. You were such a resource on set in so many different ways, and then to have Kevin come on as Nick the Snowman was unbelievable. Guys. He's such a sport, and I can't wait for you guys to see. Kevin you're in this. gonna die when you guys see Kevin in this movie, and I know he's not here right now, but. Oh my God, he was epic. It was he really was funny. Hilarious. Yeah. And we just kept, we were finding more and more moments to get him in there to get like, you know, the best was you're like, hey, Kevin wants to be a doorman or something. I go, oh no, we're going to find the right role for Kevin. And we did. And Brian Herslinger wrote it in. And this was tailor made for Kevin. So. I'm dying. I'm dying. Well, <laughs> for us, it's going to be, it's going to be kind of a tough holiday season. Yeah. Um, and so I, I love this cause I have something to look forward to. It's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. Well, we're going to have a party. So we can actually have something to celebrate. You know what I mean? Like, cause I think, I mean, I'm pretty positive and I know my mom's not going to want that. So we're going to be happy and fun yeah. regardless, but damn, like to have a Christmas movie, you know, that we can all get around, you know, and watch and laugh. My dad's yeah. going to be dying laughing at Kevin. <laughs> We're all going to have to pause, <laughs> rewind, pause, right. rewind. Well, um, I'm Irish. So it's a nice gift. I'm Irish. And we, we mourn hard and we then we celebrate hard as well. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, I feel like that's going to be one of those, you know, the emotions are going to run wild for you. I'm mm-hmm. sure this, this Christmas and this holiday season like they do for so many people yep. at this time of year. Um, but I'm glad that we'll have a small part of, you know, some joy and happiness in it. Oh, know? yeah. So we need to do a screening. We're going to have to figure out how to get yeah. Jana to one coast or another. We're either going to do one in L.A. I think we have the majority. We're in L.A. In LA. Okay, she says she's going to come. Um, um, we'll have to do a screening. And P.S., you know, we could do a fun, bigger one because we have an outdoor theater on the tennis court okay we could make Done it an deal. event we'll make it an event we let's go cakes and cocktails to be honest i kind of already saw you making this an event yes. <laughs> i've been to your i've been to your parties yeah. and they're all events and, and they gotta be big we go they big gotta, but go big. i was gonna be back here for the holidays but maybe i'll be here and then and pop then back. back yeah and then we do it like that right. but um i'll work the schedule around but you were an amazing big brother thank you you're an amazing sister so much fun working with you after all these years of knowing you and playing football with you and all like the celebrity football games and stuff and i think i threw you a touchdown and you might have thrown me the extra point and that like we're on montana's team joe montana it was on jerry rice oh wait that that? was on the madden bowl that was the malibu that was when god anointed me a football star. Yeah, it was amazing. That was my greatest moment I of life. The, I have the footage. 
I have it all. You do? I do. I have it on my phone. I'll get it <gasps> to you later. Oh my God. I'll okay. So I sacked Kurt Warner within like yep. seconds of the game. He still hates me for it. Um, but I think I might have moved too quickly. Kevin examined some footage and he goes, I think you moved a little too fast. We, we have the footage, okay, but so you might yeah, have. On count have, two rather okay. than count three. But, it's but right. I still sacked Kurt Warner. You got Warner. it. And you, you acted like you won the Super Bowl. <laughs> it was the most it was, amazing I thing. I still think it's the greatest yeah. thing ever. When I drive by Malibu and I see that field, I'm like, that's the day. Yeah. I was a football god. I beat Joe Montana for MVP. Joe Montana, the great San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, the best. And the next year, I went to New York to do it again. I'll make it really short because I've been known to tell long <laughs> stories <laughs> around. I think Jen is officially <laughs> leaving now. But I caught two touchdowns from Kurt Warner. No way. Then... I was leading the MVP forward above like Deion Sanders. And I looked up there and nobody was there. Nobody I knew was there to see me except for friends that were celebrities in the event. And she's just sneaking off. Bye, right? she, my story started. <laughs> <laughs> Work, I just got a text. All right, um, and then I dropped the like game winning one for one. <gasps> and it was like, it was like you, you just erased. Everything you did yep. up to that. Point. Everything goes out the window. Everything goes out the window. I'm like, yep. but I had two touchdowns. And then I swear to God, you know, when the reporter came up and said, hey, well, what went wrong? Uh, Coach Tony Dungy used my name, full name, which I was like super flattered. He goes, man, we we're doing amazing. And then Ryan McPartland dropped that pass. I was like, I'm just so flattered that he used my name, but I'm so crushed yeah. in the context he's using oh, it. No, those were but fun games. Those were fun. But hey, I wanted to say something before yeah. we get off that I really give you so much credit for stepping into this role and then taking direction from anybody and asking for direction. And there was such a sweet moment. My, one of my last scenes, if not um, your last scene, definitely, it was, we had this beautiful connection of, of brother and sister mm -hmm. and you really just bought into it and got grounded, dialed in, and I thought you did a great performance. So Thanks. I'm so excited for everyone to see it. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Well, you're amazing. I mean, it's it's like when you're working with great people and they're talented, you can steal a little of that <laughs> talent and absorb it. So I think you and Jana were so great together. You had such great chemistry. The movie feels so kind of rooted in reality. Like, Here's this girl. She's, yeah. you know, gone off to, you know, become a star and, uh, you know, her world. The best, the best thing we had is a little bit of time to develop the story. I mean, Jessica Edding had to write it really quickly, mm -hmm. but the development one we started talking about, like most of these stories are about falling in love. Yeah. You know, all these Christmas movies. And this one is unique because it's actually about two people who had been in love and then she had gone off and lived own life and then he had lived his and now they're falling back in love. Mm -hmm. so there's things we can do in this story that we haven't been able to do in the past and um it's not going to be predictable like yeah. a lot of the christmas movies can be and you know to lifetime's credit they said we want you guys to shake it up a little bit this year and you know don't don't make it so that everybody can telegraph and see what's coming yeah so, yeah, I think it's so great. I love it. The actors were all amazing. Of course, my husband yeah. um, played Rob. Um, Brandon, Brandon yeah. was incredible. And um, Brian Sills is playing Josh, the manager, and Steve Vinovich, uh, who plays Jack, a fellow University great. of Illinois uh, alum. He also went to Ab Juilliard. Juilliard. Yeah. I mean, like amazing that we're yeah. working with such a great actors. And, and then Brian Herzlinger, our director, was amazing. Yep. The and, best was when I first talked to him. He goes, so I just want you to know, like, I'm I'm chill. I don't I'm not a yeller. I don't do any of that. And then you get to set and he is the most jovial. We've had so much uh, fun for him. Yeah. For him to balance and juggle the fun as well as knowing what the cameras are, knowing what the actors are doing. Keeping it on track. And also like letting us go when it's a master and he's like, I don't have to get that moment. I just know he knows the moments he has to get. And yeah. it's so great because when you get that master to kind of rehearse a little bit and then I'm like, hey, did so-and-so do this? Or he's like, dude, I'm, I'm going to get it on this. Don't worry about yeah. it because we're, there's not much time, right? Yeah. So we got to we gotta move quick. And he's got such a knack for doing these and... Um, I'm excited for from the 
I actually really would love to see him do some big comedies after this. I hope that leads to it because you can see he's got hints of it in here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got to be funny in this, too. Yeah. So I think you guys are going to love this Christmas movie. I know um, we loved making it, but I think you guys are going to really love it. And I think um, I'm now addicted and we're going to have to <laughs> make at least one more Christmas movie a year. Oh, yeah. Like one Christmas movie a year is going to have to be. Yeah, this is going to be a tradition. It'll be our yeah. own tradition. But I want it to be all of us. Well, you <laughs> like know, I want it we're to be talking like about that. Like, Happy Madison, where yeah. Adam Sandler just has the same group and we're always doing this together. Yeah, that'd be great because we'll just, you will we'll introduce a couple new characters yeah. and then that's it. But It'll it's the our, core team. It's our own like theater crew. Cast and crew. Because yeah. the cast and the crew, the whole crew was amazing too. Fantastic. We had the best time and it's just like, you know, it's our, it's our summer camp. <laughs> yeah, I know this was really not work. This was just yeah. play. It's so fun. It reminded me of how much I missed and loved acting because it is play. It is. Um, it is. It's the best. And I, I'll tell you this story real quick. Well, my stories are never quick. Let's be honest. But there was one time I was coming out of this um, restaurant in Aspen, Colorado. And Jack Nicholson was standing there just smoking a cigarette by himself. And I was like, man, I'm never going to get another chance to talk to Jack Nicholson. And so I just go, hey, Jack, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Ryan McPartland. I'm an actor in L.A. And he just took a drag and he's, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I died. That was it? I died. No, I died. And I started, I laughed and I go, perfect. That's uh, that's like the best story you can tell anybody. So yeah. I go, thanks, Jack. I walk, I'm walking away I get about four or five steps. And I hear him take another drag and he goes, best job in the world. And I turn back and I said, you know what, Jack? You're right. It is the best job in the world. Oh, what a great and moment. He just, oh, and he just, he laughed and he, you know, took one back to smoking his cigarettes. I laughed and I walked away. I love and it. I was like, that was, that was such a perfect moment because I always remember that when it's late nights, three, four in the morning, mm -hmm. you're dragging it's you freezing out freezing or out. it's hot and you have to play the opposite. It's like hot and you have to play like it's cold or it's cold and you have to play yep. like it's hot. I'm sweating and trying to dry my hair and the heat in the middle of the day and we're having a snowball fight and you can't have sweat coming when you're having a snowball fight. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, best job in the world. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. I remind myself. Of that. I love it. I my Jack myself. Nicholson story. Do we want to do this right now? Kelsey, what do you think? 1000%. <laughs> I love okay. this story. This is take away. <laughs> so, so, so here different. goes. Um, so I'm at the Celtics Lakers. Yeah. In Lakers arena, obviously. Right. And at the, the stable center. And Dane Cook has um, courtside, uh, not courtside seats for this game. We're one row behind, but he had courtside for the future games. Okay. So he and I had been going to all the games together in Boston because it was the year, of course. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Okay. So anyhow, I'm interviewing people on the court. And then when I'm done, I see that there's people that haven't shown up yet. So I go, Dane, let's just steal courtside for right now. When they come, we'll leave and we'll go back to our seat right behind. No problem. So we go. And Jack Nicholson, and I'm in all green, everything green, courtside at the oh Lakers. Boy. He sees me from across and he's giving me eyes. And so at some point I get kicked out and like people came and like removed us. And I go up to the owner's suite for like the, you know, the lounge they have where you yeah. go eat. Yeah. I'm going up there. I bolt to the bathroom. And as I'm going to the bathroom, I bump into Jack Nicholson and he goes, so where'd you go? <laughs> and I go, oh, you little shit. You can't got me kicked out. And he goes, <laughs> and he did his whole laugh. I and I go, it. oh my God. So yeah. yeah it's hilarious. Yeah. That's a great story. That's a, good, well, That's a great it's story. It's a random moment to talk about Jack Nicholson. I mean, so since you did, I'm it's gonna... so funny because he's always in character. I feel yeah. like he's just like, where'd you go, sweetheart? Yeah. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but no, we have to figure out a way to do this every year. And I'm so grateful. And I really hope all of you um, watch this and, um, and just know that I am so grateful to you for making this happen and, um, and for a really beautiful experience. Well, it's, it's fun to connect the dots of all the kind of little miracles, the little connections that we have with people. And 
And sometimes it just takes opening ourselves up because I got to be honest, I didn't know what to say until I started writing. Mm -hmm. Maria, I watched your video and then it just kind of poured out of me like how much it meant to me. And with nothing in the other than I just wanted to convey that message of how empathetic I was towards your loss. And then for all this goodness to come out of something like that. Yep. And, and every time we see each other, I feel like there's a light that's shining between us. Yep. And with Kevin and, and Danielle and, you know, if they're, as I get older, I feel like I can cut away more fat. And it's just, yes. I just end up being around people that light me up. You know, yeah. then you're one of those people. So I appreciate nice. it. Well, as I get older, I get more and more emotional about all the relationships I have in my life where I'm like, oh, there are so many good people around me. Yeah. And so I feel so grateful um, for that every time. And so, yeah, I feel exactly the same way. And um, this is our time. last day together here. So oh, we'll yeah. have to mm. be connecting back in LA. Yeah, definitely. And I was going to say a lot of times in, in <clears> Hollywood, <throat> people say, oh man, Hollywood people are so fake. Or, but there's not all those people. You find the right ones. Oh, <laughs> you, yeah. know, you find the good people that you spend time with. And then you don't, you know, give anybody else your time. That's the one thing that that's all we have, right? Like mm -hmm. that's our, that's our most valuable commodity we have. So we got to be careful how we spend it and who we spend it with. So yep. I, I appreciate you and I look forward to us spending more time together. Yeah, me too. For this COVID thing to go away. Oh my God. <laughs> Love you. Love you too. Oh, thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, thank so you. it sounds like they're filming down there, but could you do me the greatest favor and see if potentially Brian is Brian, able to yeah, pop yeah, in for okay, a sec? Yeah. If he is, great. If not, then we'll we'll wrap it there. We'll Ladies, just chit -chat. What are you thinking? This is no, so no, fun. Tell us. I was yeah. literally, I'm literally texting Kevin, like, this is what we're missing, Maria. This is so fun. Like, I love watching you just go rogue and just, you light up when you just chat with people, you just connect with everyone and especially people that you've, you, you have this relationship with and this story with like these two. I just think it's so special. It's really, Thanks. really cool to watch. I love it. Thank you. Like, this is so fun. I'm glad you like it. I, um, I, I love it too. It's just it's kind of like the no frills, like, okay, this isn't like, you exactly. know, perfectly set up shot, but we're doing it. But I also um, think that's what people love. Like we love just watching because you're, you have such a gift. Like this is what you're amazing at. So people love watching you do it. And I was like, this is so fun. So fun. Thanks. You also give great advice. Your advice to Jana, I'm like, heck yeah. And you reminded me to keep writing in my anger journal. Oh. Oh my God, I, I forget to write in my angry journal. Oh my God, we have the director. <laughs> what? I'm ready for my close up, Mr. DeMille. I, I, I mean, Mr. Herzinger. Oh my God. Just Hi. join me on my couch. Hi. My casting couch. Oh, wow. I, oh God, Welcome. let me fix myself. <laughs> you have a pink nipple again. I do. I know. I know you're dying to touch it again. It's all good. Everything's fine. This just tells you I am COVID free. That's what that means right there. Uh, I, um, oh, I don't have a pink nipple. So I'm, am I not COVID free? That sounds like a medical. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a medical thing. Um, wow, are we on a bed? Yeah, we are. We're. It's like a couch bed. I think it's I like a it. futon thing. I but um, we chatted with with Jana to start mm -hmm. with Ryan, and now you. Um, so you have directed a lot of things. Of course, my date with Drew. The documentary right. is the most like poppy um, thing, and it got you to do a little bit of what I do with Jay Leno. And so, guys. Um, maybe we'll put a link to Brian's, um, talent reel in this episode because I got so many laughs out I'm of so you. Glad. And you have the best laugh. Thanks. You <laughs> have, you have the best laugh. It, Do you know how hard it was, by the way, to not laugh like myself? That's not you. Cause you laughed in the movie pretty much like you. I don't think so. I think it was a little, a little different version because I didn't want Maria to be Jenny. Jenny's my name, by the way. Say my name, say, okay. I have um, to look at the footage because I remember you doing it. And I can't remember if it was like really? after we finished before I cut Shit. and you started I don't know. It. Oh yeah, no, I think that it was after cut. I was trying to be really, really mindful. Everybody at the monitor, we were crying when you laughed. <laughs> it, was, it was the best thing ever. And you are so good in the movie. Thank you. I have to, every, you wait till you see her. She's, Maria is fantastic in this movie. Yeah, and uh, I didn't pay him to say that. She did not, she did not. Do you know, every time I go home, Kevin would be like, you were really good. You were. Because <laughs> Kevin's, Kevin's my, great. Kevin's Kevin's great. my yeah. toughest critic ever. And he's like, you've really caught, like, gotten grounded and comfortable. And I was like, well, I felt really safe. And so that is, 
a credit to you because I felt safe to be whatever I wanted to be and to kind of, um, you know, just do it. And then I knew you would give me direction on pulling it in or making it bigger or whatever. And so. You and a great question. <clears throat> a great questions coming in about the character and ideas you wanted to do. And usually I'm just like, yeah, that's spot on. Yeah. But, it, you know, every once in a while, I need, everybody needs a little steering. Thanks. Well, I'm not yeah. a great driver. So, you know, I'm you're not a great driver. Thing. I'm actually good. I just suck at directions, which is I'm a director, which is ironic. That's yeah. funny. That's my wife. She, she's one. We're on ways all the time. All right. Yes. So, OK, so this script comes across your desk. Mm -hmm. um, how many Christmas movies have you done? Christmas movies. I think it's about like 10. Really? Something like that. Yeah. You're like an expert. It's ridiculous. What's yeah. the what's the secret to making a Christmas movie? Christmas vomit. That is the secret. Christmas vomit. What do you mean? Every shot, every scene has got to have Christmas everywhere. Oh. And it's called, I call it Christmas vomit. And I don't know. I, you know, for me, I, you know, I'm, I'm Jewish. So I'm the go-to Jew for these Christmas. Uh -huh. and do you have a Christmas tree? Yeah, of course. I married, I married his chick. So, you know, it's fantastic. <laughs> no, I, uh, I love Christmas. Always wanted to have Christmas growing up. And now it's like, I get to do it multiple times of the year. All yeah. year is Christmas for me, pretty much. Oh my God. I didn't think about, think about that. Yeah, you do like two of these movies a year. You're, you're, you know, in, in production and post-production. Kevin's got to start directing Christmas movies. It's so fun. I, I literally am like, I drink peppermint mochas year round. Okay. <laughs> like I am in the holiday spirit. I'm listening to the songs. Wow. But I, that is genius for people who love Christmas. When you love making it, it's a wonderful life. It's like your favorite movie, right? Yeah. <laughs> Wizard of Oz is my number one favorite movie. Christmas movie. It's a Wonderful Life. And It's a Wonderful Life is in my top five overall oh, anyway. It it's, it's the greatest movie ever made. Amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, for me, it's, it's for each of these movies for me to get excited about them. What is it story-wise? What is it character-wise? What is it directorial, directorially that I would really get a kick out of doing? And sometimes when I first read the script, it's not necessarily there. But then as we're developing it, as we're going through the mm -hmm. process, I, I, I mm -hmm. start to see the stuff that I'm going to love to do with it. So all of the Christmas movies I've done are all different in, in, in various ways, yeah. but they all do have Christmas in it. And, and it's been a blast navigating that. And, you know, my wife and I write, you know, these, these movies together now and, um, you know, and, and we're about to do our third Christmas movie that we wrote together. I started reading the, um, the treatment that you sent me for it. It was really oh, cool. Yeah. Because the we love musicals. Music. Yeah. I didn't know if I could say it. Yeah. The no, musical. I, I want to do a musical. Well, the, the step, <clears throat> Leading up to that is, and I just got this yesterday, uh, December 3rd, uh, a Christmas dance reunion, the the dirty dancing type Lifetime Christmas movie that Megan and I wrote and I directed with Corbin Blue and Monique Coleman is premiering on Lifetime. And I'm so proud of this. It has like full dance numbers. That's and it's awesome. like one step shy of being a full musical. And, and I can't wait to see I'm it. I'm like, it, it, we got the high school musical cast reunited. We should this. do a screening party at my house. I would totally do a screening party. Yes. At your house. Will you remember? I, I, how am I going to forget that? <laughs> how am I going to forget that? Of okay. course. Yeah. I'm already there. I'm, I'm flying home and I'll be right at your house. Uh, but um, but yeah, I think it's just, it's it's the most magical time of the year. It know? really is. If you do it right. It's fun. Oh my God. Now I know why I have to be able to do at least one Christmas movie a year because you're right. Now, the Christmas spirit just continues because well, we it's just, almost time. It was Christmas in July for us. We yeah. Were just shooting it but it's almost time again. I know. Like I'm already thinking about like how I'm going to handle my schedule around the holidays. I can be there with my dad. Right. And, you know, so I'm there the whole time, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yeah. So that's so cool. So um, what was the hardest part of making this movie for you? Uh the hardest part is you're always competing with a schedule, a budget, um, you know, weather restrictions. Mm -hmm. and we're, we're shooting a Christmas movie in the middle of the summer. Yeah. So, so uh, I just want it to be great. And all of those, those aspects of it make it harder, mm -hmm. but it also causes you to rise up to be able to face it. Right. Yeah. And figure out creative ways to make it work. I never want an audience member to know how much time or money I had to make this movie. Yeah. Well, you can't guys. Every shot I got to see looks like the notebook. Like you just, <laughs> it, no, seriously. Like it looks so beautiful. And I'm like, are we, what, what? We're, we're watching the notebook. Like it's so romantic oh, and beautiful and idyllic and mystic Connecticut is a beautiful place. Oh my to God. Shoot. It's the first time I've shot in Connecticut. I love it. Oh my Lord. It's um, great. And, and I'll, t I'll start with you with the cast. It is, that's a joy for me. 
uh, you know, so easy to direct you. And then having, and I, we had never worked together. Yeah. But I had directed Janet in A Welcome Home Christmas. Uh-huh. And I had directed Ryan in Twinkle All the Way. And, um, and Brian Sills in Twinkle All the Way. And they call me after the yeah. direct, but, <laughs> but it was <clears throat> having worked with everybody separately. It was, I knew how great it was going to be when we got everybody together. Yeah. And, and the chemistry in this movie is just, you know, through the roof and yeah. in a great way, in a magical way, totally in a very romantic way. Um, and that's one of the things that I love about doing these movies is, is, you know, we're making a romantic comedy that takes place at Christmas and, um, I, I, my hope is that everybody in the family can enjoy it. Yeah, I think they will. And we had so much fun with you Thank and you. I can't wait for the next one because as Ryan and I were just talking about our conversation at dinner the other night, we got a happy Madison. This. Like, I know I, exactly. Adam Sandler always 100%. works with the same people. Yes. Like every Christmas we can spend together in July. <laughs> yes. I, I call it. We assemble our Avengers. Yeah. We and then the we team. can get a few sprinkles of new people here 100%. and there. We'll throw one in. But the crew was great. Everybody was great. Yeah. So let's keep the formula going. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. 100%. And I'm good to play the sister every time. It's so much less pressure. <laughs> oh my God. You, you have a lot that's coming your way. I'm telling you, when people see you in this, oh, you thank are so you. good in it. Seriously. Thanks. Yes, I appreciate I'm that. Yay. All right. Well, Brian, thank you so much. Go so enjoy. Go direct. Uh, go direct. Okay. Uh, he let me direct one too which was cool i got to yell action (laughs) (laughs) anyhow um i cannot wait to watch you in this also if we have a um screening party for that high school musical thing is zach efron (laughs) invited Um, i'm just asking for i'm asking for a friend aka Um, myself i'm sure we could yes i'm sure we could (laughs) wait i'm Um, so excited to watch you in this though maria wow 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 i'm super excited to to see it and like i said it's just it's so nice to get to work with nice people. And yeah. I don't know if I said this on the show the other day, but you know, um, and, and it's hard. I don't want to uh, overstate or understate, but I definitely had a lot of tough, tough experiences in this business. I also had some really beautiful ones. Generally they were you know, in the acting and endorsement kind of world where people just are used to treating people with a lot of respect and kindness. Um, but, um, but it was just so awesome and so fun. They called me back today cause they knew I was in town. They're like, we're doing some marketing stuff. Can you come shoot some marketing promos? I'm like, sure, let's do it. So fun. Um, <clears throat> but it's been, it's been a magical experience. So, um, I love that, uh, Jana is so vulnerable and open with stuff. And I think that, you know, <clears throat> getting to, hear how she's been handling this time it was really great and um and maybe someone can gain some strength from her um because I really have been blown away by her watching her um how she handles stuff and and how she's been handling this it's not easy to you know have to do this alone I honestly give her so much credit you know what I picked up too that I really liked was that it like it's okay to say you're not okay you mm-hmm. know, like that when she had to tell her, her manager, her <coughs> friend, when she was like, actually, no, I'm not okay. And I think especially women were so scared, especially if we were raised like the strong one or this or that. It's mm-hmm. like, we're like, no, 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 I'm fine when you're not. And it's like, no, that's, then that's going to bubble up inside of you and come out in other ways. Mm-hmm. Like, it's okay to say you're not okay when you're not okay. And I think that that's so yeah. amazing that she's like sharing that and showing everyone that. Yeah. I think we're going to do a show together. You should. I think we should. What I love it. Think? I'm in. Um, <clears throat> okay. So that is going to do it for me from here in Waterford, Connecticut. I'm going to take my little drive in my 2002 yellow Thunderbird back to my home. Um, I think I'm going to do dinner with these guys probably first. And then so fun. I'll do that because I love them. And it's like, it's going to be like officially our last day together. Um, but um, thank you guys for, for joining. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being part of this heel squad and for being on this journey with me and all of us. Um, you know, life is, is beautiful, but it also has its challenges. And that's why we're all here together because we are better together. We'll grow together here. We'll learn together here. We'll cry together here. You guys know I cry. Um, maybe too much, but whatever. <laughs> Never too and, much. Um, and we have a lot of big plans to to build this show. And a lot of really cool people are coming together this weekend with us to take this next level. So I hope you guys are ready 
to go next level with us. And um, I'm whispering now because they're filming downstairs, but I love you guys. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Be nice people, make good choices and be present.